Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? Okay, what you might be wondering is what does this have to do with achieving my weight loss goals? Apparently, everything. I am referring to the most powerful neurotransmitter, dopamine, which has been credited with giving us the motivation to take action to accomplish anything we desire. From seemingly mundane tasks such as just getting out of bed in the morning to creating a complex strategy to one day inhabit the planet Mars. <laughs> but like everything else in life, there is a Goldilocks of dopamine as well, where too little, we stop eating entirely or get out of bed, and too much, we can become addicts. Dopamine drives behaviors, including your eating behaviors. This is an evolutionary trait that has ensured our survival until now. Hi, my name is Bonnie London, and in today's video, I am going to explain to you why dopamine could be at the root cause of your diet behaviors, and more importantly, how can you use dopamine to accomplish your goals rather than sabotage them. Our modern environment is a complete mismatch for our brains that continue to be wired from primitive times. Now, what once served as the impetus to forage the forest for berries or hunt for dangerous animals to keep us alive has turned on us. Dopamine, which now can drive us to eat easily accessible as well as hyper palatable foods far after we have consumed what is required for survival. As dopamine constantly will tease you, taunt you, and provoke you that that next bite, that next bite is going to be the one that is going to finally seal the deal and satisfy you and the end of your, your angst. Unfortunately, there really is no satisfaction as for dopamine because the job of do dopamine ultimately is not satisfaction. It is to motivate you to take action. To make matters even more complicated, the food industry, as you might realize, is not actually on your side, as they have cleverly hijacked your dopamine by carefully crafting the perfect combination of sugar, salt, and fat to trigger what is called the bliss point. And this dysregulation of dopamine has been implicated as playing a central role in controlling our food intake and contributing to overweight and obesity. This constant yearning for the quick hit to of something to make us feel good is just not working because you know the more you pull on that lever of dopamine in hopes of settling the search the less satisfying engaging in the behavior becomes as we so frequently think about with addicts like alcoholics but we can also say very similar effects with food now imagine the last time that you indulge in your favorite treat. It is that first bite that really provides that largest release of dopamine as it pushes you to re-experience that first bite feeling again and again. But ultimately, ending up with the crumbs at the bottom of the bag, yes, licking your fingers, that's what I do. Um, I am guilty. <laughs> well, how can we use dopamine to accomplish our goals rather than sabotage them? Here is my top suggestions today. Number one, 
we need to consider that dopamine is not about your end goal, your end goal of weight loss. Dopamine is about the journey. So in order to achieve your end goals, what you want to do is you want to find a way to release dopamine while engaging in the necessary behaviors. For example, if currently you really hate to exercise, which many people do, by the way, so don't feel bad, but it's going to make it hard to sustain over the long term. So some ideas might be maybe get a friend or an accountability partner to make it more social and fun. And of course, finding something that you enjoy doing that maybe isn't quote unquote exercise, like some sort of sport out in nature. Or maybe what I like to do is reading a book or listening to an audio a book that I only do while I'm exercising. So it definitely gets that motivation dopamine going. My next suggestion has to do with your diet. So if you really dread eating a salad or vegetables and even to the point of thinking of it as some sort of punishment, chances are that maybe your initial incentive to eat them is gonna wear off pretty quickly. How about finding something that you really enjoy that could be healthy as well. What I often suggest is think about like some flavors or foods that you already like, and maybe we can just come up with some healthier versions of the same one. Also, cooking is another way to really connect with the food and bring more enjoyment to it, even though I understand it is a bit of an effort. And and finally, as opposed to thinking about the long game and reward, really thinking about how you feel right after you engaged in this positive behavior, like you feel sharp as attack in the afternoon after lunch, or maybe you have more energy all day after you exercise. And this is something I do in my private practice with my clients because the more that we can associate these positive behaviors with the immediate reward, the more likely we're gonna uh, stick with it and repeat and repeat and those pathways can become stronger over time. My next suggestion is to practice mindful eating. Mindfulness is based on the understanding that when we are not paying attention to something, it is though it didn't happen. If, if you have ever had the experience, hello, of eating, you know, out of the bag of popcorn while watching a movie and you don't even know where it went, then you might know what I'm talking about. So my suggestion, of course, would be that when you eat, kind of make it an event. Set your table in an attractive way and don't have any distractions other than the partner that you're sitting with or even, you know, in our crazy modern world, maybe having a Zoom call with someone, but certainly not having distractions like the, like the TV on in the background and you are gonna find that you really enjoy the food a lot more when you are paying attention to it and you will notice those cues of when you are full and actually satisfied. And then finally, but maybe most importantly, focusing on whole foods. As I mentioned in this word of this world of hyper palatable foods, you know, the idea of you know, putting down the, the, you know, the honey mustard uh, pretzels and eating some plain almonds. It might not sound that exciting, but after a while of really getting off of these highly seasoned processed foods, your taste buds will come back in a pretty brief period of time to really appreciate the, the subtle flavors of whole and natural foods. Okay. Well, the bottom line here is that you can stop looking for love in all the wrong places and direct dopamine to drive the behaviors that you want instead of the ones that you are trying to avoid. If you found this video 
at all helpful or interesting, please subscribe, like, share, comment. I would love to hear from you. And also, if you're interested in discussing what a personal plan could do for you, there is a link in the description below to book a no-cost call, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.